Hi, welcome to Chad Silversmithing. Uh, first, thanks for coming to my channel. I appreciate you visiting. Uh, I'd appreciate it if you hit the like button before you leave. That helps getting my channel promoted uh, a great deal. So thanks in advance for doing that. Um, today, I wanted to do something I've actually not done before, and it's to make a few uh, two-finger rings. Um, over the years, I've seen these a few times, and uh, I thought it might be kind of fun to try some different variations of it and see how they come out. Before we get started though, I'd like to thank some people. I wanted to thank my YouTube subscribers first off. We passed 4,300, which is great and uh, just keeps growing and I'm amazed by that and I really appreciate all of your uh, kind words and input. Um, I also wanted to thank my patrons over on Patreon. Uh, that's a group that pays for my premium content over there. and. Uh, if you're, if you're interested in Patreon, uh, you can find some details in the video description down below, as well as some other links to relevant content related to my channel, uh, like how to get to my website in case you wanted to buy some jewelry, uh, if you wanted to just uh, buy me a coffee because you wanted to give me a tip for my content, uh, or uh, there's even a merch store there if you wanted to get yourself, uh, I don't know, for instance, one of these nice design idea books that has a nice craft paper in them, uh, which I use all the time now. So. But enough self-promotion, uh, let's get started on these three different variations of the two-finger ring. So I picked out, uh, well, let me show you the designs first. Let's see. Okay, so I was thinking, this is kind of the standard one you find uh, in various places for sale and online where it's just got two bands together with something mounted on top. I think for this one I'm going to do uh, a turquoise. I uh, pre-made some of the components of these since I'm doing three things and I don't want you to have to watch a three hour video so um, we'll be kind of assembling them here. Um, so yeah we'll do that one first probably. I'm going to put it on a little base of um, I think some 18 gauge sheet and then I'll probably use 8 gauge half round for that one. Uh, for this one I was going to do one that looks like an exclamation point and uh, I'm running short of pear shaped stones that are that long and skinny so I'm using one that's sort of close to a pear shaped stone <laughs> and it's a piece of uh, jadeite from uh, Russia I think this stuff comes from so it's similar to a, an exclamation point mark and then what else do I have here for the period on the exclamation point I got a if we can do this without shooting it across the room. So what I'm going to do on this one here is I'll have this is the that part of the exclamation point and then this is the point of it. Um, and then we're going to do kind of a one of this this kind of a thing shape with uh, <laughs> and then we're going to do sort of a almost a figure eight out of it but not quite complete the figure eight and I think I'll use a six gauge half round for that um, and I cut a piece already to that length uh, the third one I want to do is something with some faceted stones and this one's going to be just two partial bands I'm going to cap each end with a little faceted uh, round citrine about six millimeters and the middle one here will be um, an oval citrine and I'm going to put that at about a 9 by 7 if I remember right. Yeah, that's what I wrote there. So we'll kind of kind of mount that and then it'll look like there's theoretically it should look like there's no bands, there's just three things sitting on top of your fingers kind of. So it'd be kind of interesting to see how that goes. I debated on whether to make them straight up and down or to make them come in like torques. I think I'm going to make them come in like torques, although I think you could do either way and that would just be a stylistic decision on your part. So whichever you prefer I think would be cool, probably. But let's start with this one. I uh, already let's put these back away so I don't lose them. For the sake of time, I, uh, I made the bezel already for this piece of turquoise that I'm going to use for the stone here and I cut a piece of 18 gauge sheet which I'm going to use as the base. I only use that thick of a base uh, because I'm going to leave part of it sticking out here. If Normally if I was making the bottom of a bezel I'd use 26 or 22 or something like that. 
but since we're going to leave some on the edge here, uh, just going to go ahead and do some thick stuff. And then uh, we'll just have to make two bands, see how to connect them here. I'm not sure how I'm going to do that yet. I may just lay them next to each other and solder them together. Or I may file a flat spot on each one. That's probably what I'll do is file a flat side on each side and just butt them up against each other. Maybe right where the solder joint is on each of them. That would probably work. So, And then we'll just mount this on top like that. So let's get started on that one. If you've never watched my videos before, I use a hard silver sheet solder and I use a spray-on flux called Mighty Flux. And there's pet hairs <laughs> in my workshop. All right, so go ahead and solder this to the face, and then I'll trim it down and make it a nice uh, oval. Well, theoretically, I will if I'm in good filing form today. Put uh, six or seven of these pieces in there, you know, roughly an eighth of an inch by an eighth of an inch, or two or three millimeters square. I'm just going to push them up against the sides a little bit. The thing about using thick sheet uh, for the bottom of a bezel is um, it's already hard to get the sheet up to the soldering temperature compared to the bezel which sits on top of it. So it's a little easier if you can access the bottom of this. So some people use those tripods with screens on them. And that way you can heat from the bottom as well. You can also tip it up a little bit if you need to. But if with real careful heating, you can usually do it pretty easily. Um, a thinner sheet is less likely to cause the bezel to melt because it takes less time for that much mass to get up to that soldering temperature. It's not so bad if you have uh, an edge around it where you can point the heat at in order to get that heat pumped into the bottom sheet. Mm -hmm. This is a 3 16 inch fine silver bezel strip I believe and I think it's a 26 gauge. Just trying to ensure that I get a seam all the way around so I don't have any gaps. Nobody wants a bezel gap. What would people say? They'd say, I don't want to buy a chance, crappy jewelry. <laughs> Alright, so I'm going to spend a little time cutting that and filing that down into a nice symmetrical oval, theoretically. The other thing is I would never uh, leave really thin sheets sticking out from the edge of a bezel like this because it's flimsy and it becomes sharp when you polish it almost like a knife edge. So it looks cheap and I think, you know, something more solid is going to be a better choice for you. likely not perfect but I think I'm gonna call it good for now I can always fine-tune it as I go I'm also gonna file this bezel down significantly okay so I'm gonna make a couple of bands and let's make them like size seven. okay so I'm gonna cut a little strip of scratch paper just going to measure for a 7 there on the mandrel. If I'm doing an exact 7, I'm going to add a little bit extra to compensate for the 
three-dimensionality of the actual wire that I'm using, plus the filing I'll have to do. So that's how long I'll cut those. If you want to see my video about making simple bands, here's a link to it up there. Okay, I got two size 7 bands here. They're soldered right here, so I think... Uh, here's the solder joint on this one. I think I'll just file a flat spot on both of them. I might use my miter, uh, miter vise jig just to hold it so I get it pretty flat. Join between the two. flat spot there now. Same thing with this one. That should work. Might not even need to add solder on this one. Just line up those two flat spots. I have some extra solder over here in case I need it, so... Went ahead and added a little bit just to make sure we got a good solid join there. Okay, so now the trick is getting this on top of that straight. So let's file it straight across this top edge here. I don't know if this will fit in my my miter vice thing, so I don't think so. But it should be relatively easy to keep it pretty straight. It's still leaning this way a little bit. That's a little better. The trick is now getting it lined up along this pretty symmetrically. So this side is a little bit longer than the other side. Pretty good. This is my attempt to try to get this lined up along the axis of the stone here. That's one of those things I, I have go wrong on me a lot is I get something soldered on well but I don't have it soldered on straight. Kind of dried that slowly so when the flux bubbles up as you dry it, so it didn't bubble up enough to knock the, the band over. So. so a couple of ways you can do this. Probably just put take a piece and just kind of tuck it up against there, or lean it against there. Well, I think you might have better luck getting it to flow into the underside if you have it tucked under a little bit. Um, or you could pick solder it if you want. Normally I would probably pick solder this, but... Focusing most of the heat on the bottom thing where all that 18 gauge sheet is. If you're new to this, figuring out where to apply the heat based on how much mass is present is kind of the key to doing this well. Just 
painting a little bit over there in case it didn't quite touch when it was flowing. Once some of it hits the, the juncture between the two though, it will start wicking along that seam. So. Let's let that one pickle and we'll do the second one. Second one is going to be this kind of like figure eight one. And I debated about whether to use uh, something that was not half round because it's going to be half round on the inside on this one, half round on the outside over here. But I don't really care about that. <laughs> Honestly, I think it's fine. Uh, it's kind of part of the cool aspect of the ring. What I think I do need to do though is in order to get this to come nicely into this join here. I'm going to have to file this down a little bit. So I'm going to pull that back out. I'll spend a little bit of time smoothing that into kind of a, a tapered end so I can actually solder, solder it to uh, this other side here and have a nice connection. And since this is flat on the side, I need to gradually taper this into a flat. So that's what I'm going to do next. I realized a while back that I was thinking about the way I file because a lot of people think it's weird that I file right in front of me and not pressed against the surface most of the time. Part of it is, and I do do that sometimes, but part of it is uh, showing, showing it to the camera when I'm filing. The other part is um, I just kind of learned doing it this way too. So, um, But I realized one thing that I do with the file that is I use it sort of sculpturally. Because I'm not casting things, I don't have a lot of ways to change the shape of stuff other than cutting and sawing, but I kind of like to file in some pretty intricate details with a file sometimes. In order to get those two touching nicely, I'm going to have to bend it off to one side, push it past a little bit like that so that when I push them, pull them back beyond each other, they'll be pushing together a little bit. Okay. Uh oh, I lost my saddle. <laughs> I'm going to pick up another piece just because it's a big piece of metal, so there's a plenty of solder here. Now I need to do a bit of shaping. I'm thinking about how I'm going to mount these. Here's the two bezels I made for this. And I was going to mount this over here, and then this kind of like that. So I think I need to file a little bit of flat spot on both of these. But I think that's about the right length. keep making these three different types of things videos because they seem to do really well so you guys must like them I hope you know I did a few five types of simple things but uh, I usually can't squeeze five into one video <laughs> or always come up with five unique ideas but so far these have done relatively well the one with the adjustable rings, I think it was last week, is climbing pretty rapidly. The one with uh, three-inch 
three different ways to set square cabochons. That was a few weeks ago. That uh, that one went on a really weird climb in, as far as viewership, up to like over 5,000 all of a sudden. So either YouTube started promoting that for some reason more than usual, or uh, or there was something people really liked about that one. For this one, in order to get it where I want it to be, so I want, let's see, I'm going to use the magnesia block here. And this is going to be the top of my exclamation point again again. And this thing, I kind of want to cover some of the you know, the band that's showing, so I'm going to solder it to this side over here, I think. There's solder on the bottom of that uh, step bezel that I made, so may not even need to add any there. I'm going to just in case. Yeah. But likely enough there to Okay, I think that'll look like an exclamation point once we're done. We'll see. So I'm going to throw that in the pickle. It's time for number three. So I'm going to use some 12 gauge square here. So for this one, um, I need to attach this to the back of uh, an open back bezel. So I'm going to have to attach it to one of the sides. So it's probably going to be the lower side. Um, this one, uh, once I attach these two sets of rings together, I should be able to file flat and I can mount to either side of my central bezel that I've created already. Um, so I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to take uh, four pieces of this 12 gauge. Yeah, I think so. Um, so that we solder them together. Where they come apart on one end just slightly, like this. So we have that, and then this end will be over here, and this end here will split open for over here. So it'll actually be a four way split, it'll split this way and it should split on the sides here too a little bit like that. I think that'll be kind of a cool effect. Of course we'll file it straight across like that. So, so yeah, gonna cut some of these. I gotta figure out how big of a ring I need to make and then compensate for the gap here. So let's take a piece of uh, a strip of paper. I'm thinking the central stone, my citrine. So I'm thinking, uh, let's make this about a seven and a half. Well, let's make it an eight, because I think with these things coming over here, it may be a little bit clunky as a seven and a half. If I was going to do a seven and a half, I'd probably do smaller stones, maybe. So let's do like an eight and a half or, or nine, maybe. Okay. Sure. So since we're not going all the way around here, normally I would cut it about right there for a size nine, but we need to drop out a little bit of it. So I'm thinking, you know, let's. Let's cut them short like that. Um, let me think about this for a second. 
I'm actually going to make them about that long and then we'll have some extra to play with and we can size it down. It's better to have a little extra than not enough. So this is the line we're going to use here to cut the four lengths. Okay, I don't need to spread these very far open because the stone isn't very wide. So I, I measured maybe a quarter of an inch or so, or maybe five millimeters or six millimeters. I don't know where my ruler went, so I'm just going to try and make kind of a sharp bend there. Just a little one, doesn't have to be very steep. I just want to be able to get them to where I can solder them together, but they come apart at the at the, uh, at, the at that point there. Close enough, I think. properly on top. Put a few decent sized pieces up here. There too. Okay, so now I think I'm just going to go ahead and uh, make these into band shapes. I'm going to probably have to do it on my knee where I can uh, position this better to bang it around the mandrel, but I'm going to shape it around the mandrel until it's an open-ended uh, ring shape. Okay, so I got those shaped, and I think since these are going to come together like this, I don't want to have a huge gap there so I'm going to kind of get them to join pretty close to the top there. So I found a little kind of a hole here in the uh, magnesia block. I'm going to solder these guys together. Try to get them to look relatively symmetrical. about right. I got some solder right there on the pad. to just be soldered on one side and I could see that it wasn't quite sitting flat. So, do on this side too. I guess I better flex this side a little bit. I have a feeling when I get this hot enough that the little gap that's there is going to just disappear because it's going to slump a little bit. So I'm going to cool that off so I can handle it and then do a little bit of filing to get it all shaped up. That's kind of cool, I like that. It's very bridge-like or something. 
<laughs> so I'm going to file this top flat right here. Should we solder this one on first and then figure out where these other ones go? I'm thinking I'll cut these off quite a bit more. So they're kind of just maybe up around that level. I don't know. We'll have to see. Let's see if we can't get these guys attached. Strangely, I think I got it straight enough, which is sort of surprising. Okay, well, it looks like I got all four of those soldered, so now I have to figure out where I want these ones to go. I kind of want to do it along the same plane as the bottom of this, too. Yeah. So, use that as a guide. Kind of cut it, I'm going to cut it off at, at a more of a perpendicular angle to the band, though. screw anything up. those pickle and then we'll polish them up and set the stones and I'll show you the final result. Just wanted to take a moment to show you the, the final results. There's that one. Turquoise. You can see the kind of overall. This one that's Supposed to be an exclamation point, sort of. Kind of cool. And this one, I don't have the fingers for this, but somebody with smaller fingers than me, this will make a nice ring for. I'm just going to wear it up like that. So, I'll, uh, I'm going to still do a little bit of cleanup on the tops of the bezels with the Dremel, and then uh, I'll take some nice pictures of them. So well, that was a few types of two finger rings. I hope you enjoyed that. If you did, make sure to hit the like button before you leave. That helps out my channel a lot. Don't forget to hit the video description down below um, to check out some links to the various uh, sites related to my channel here. Uh, my Patreon, the Buy Me A Coffee link, my merch store, my website. All those can be found there in the video description. So make sure to do that. And I'd love to have you subscribe, but uh, check out a few more videos before you do and then uh, make the decision. So. Thanks again for visiting. Happy silversmithing. Take care.